to my channel. So today I'm going to be solving leak code 5, longest palindrome mixed up string. And given a string, it says given a string S, return the longest palindromic substring in S. So palindrome is just something that's written the same forwards and backwards. So yeah, so here, I mean, technically, palindrome should have like a dictionary meaning. Um, but, so this is kind of like a permutation? Or, no, 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 no. Anagram. Anyways, who cares? Uh, so here in this example, we have B-A-B-A-D. And the longest palindromic substring is B A B. So that's what we return. So it's the same forwards and it's the same backwards. And then it says A B A is also a valid answer. And then here we have C B B D, so it returns B B. And then if it's just one character, that character is a palindrome of itself. And then here it's just, it could be either A or it could be C. All right. And then it says S consists only of digits and English letters. And here is our constraint. So I think one way to think about this is to think about what makes a string a palindrome. So like in the case of B A B A D, wait, B A B A D B A B A B. Okay, that's not that's not a palindrome. Let me just think of a known palindrome that people know of. Okay, um, race car. No, 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 no. I'll go for a simple one. A B B A. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hold on, it's too messy. Okay, in the case, like, let's just, instead of considering substrings, let's consider the the problem where we know this, let's say we assume this is a palindrome, like someone told us this is a palindrome, but how would we check to, to confirm that? So in the case of a full word that's a palindrome, um, one way to check if it's a palindrome is if, like, we have one pointer here, and if we have a pointer here, and we check if those two are the same, and if they're the same, then we move this pointer out here to the next letter on the left side, and we move this pointer to the next letter on the right side. We check this and this, and we check if those are the same. So our conclusion for this specific word will be, yes, we've verified this is a palindrome. We started inwards, and we worked our way out. And let's say, for example, someone told us this string was a palindrome. So A, B, B, I'll say A, B, B, A, C and F. Okay, let's say somebody told us this string was a palindrome, and we said, okay, let me check if that if that's true. So we start a pointer here, a pointer here from the middle, and we expand outwards. So we'll say, okay, this is true. So so far, um, we have true. So this is true, and then we expand outwards. So now our oh, let me change the color. So now our pointer is here. And our pointer is here, and we check are these the same character? If they are, then it's still true. And then we expand our pointer outwards. Now this left pointer is here, and this right pointer is here, and we check are these the same character? And now it's false. So as soon as we get false, we know this is not a this string is not a palindrome. So that's just for a general string, like a like a complete string. But now how can we apply this same logic to a substring? So for example, B A B A D, you know, what if we started from like, let's say we're on the character A. What if we started from A and expanded outwards until the characteristic of a substring was broken and then somehow returned that string and went went on with that? So like what I'm trying to say is keep the same concept in mind. So B A B A D, but we don't necessarily have to start from the middle. We can start from every one character. And if we still have room to go left, we'll go left. And if we still have room to go right, we'll go right. So I'm just going to ignore the first character for now. Let's start at the second character. So we'll expand out with two pointers. So And we'll be checking, is it the same? Is it the same? And if it is, we keep expanding if we have space. And that gives us whether or not one specific sub substring of a full entire string is a palindrome. So we take this same logic that we did here and we apply that to every substring in our string. So I hope that makes sense. That's literally it for the logic. So I'm going to um, I'm going to generalize this. So instead of expanding from the middle, like I was saying, I'm just gonna call the method expand from point. So I'm gonna use a helper method to kind of expand from each point we're at, and then uh, give us the length of uh, the length of that substring, and then we can use our main method or our, what's it called, longest palindrome method to work with that and 
get our values. So hopefully that makes sense. So let's just code it. Um, so here, oops, hold on one second. All right, so first we're obviously gonna check if s equals equals null, oops, equals equals null, or s dot length equals equals zero. Then we return, what are we even returning? I guess an empty string because there's no palindrome. And then, all right. So from here, we can start writing our methods. So the first, uh, what I'm gonna write before actually is the helper method that we discussed here, basically expanding from one single point and going outwards, left to right, and comparing values. So I'll say, make it a private method, and I'll say private, and it's gonna return an integer. So it's gonna return, basically, uh, what that's gonna return is the length of a certain substring um, that we got. So that's how we're going to use to compare um, the lengths in this method. And then we return the biggest length that we see, the index of that starting length and the end of that length. So hopefully it's making sense. So private int, uh, what is, so we're going to say expand from middle. Um, and then I said that I would generalize this method. So it doesn't necessarily have to be expanding from the middle. So I'll call it expand from point, from a certain point. And what this will, so this will get passed in, will get passed in a string, it will get passed in a left boundary, and it will get passed in a right boundary. So string s int left int right. All right. So we're going to basically uh, loop through so long as the left boundary uh, doesn't go off this string, so long as the left boundary is greater than our right boundary. And so long as our right boundary doesn't go off the off the, the string as well, so we'll say while. So first I'll do it. I'll do a check, and I should check. So if s equals equals null, or s dot length equals equals zero, then return. And then we can get into it. So uh, what we want to do is say, okay, while left is less than or equal to right. Like I said, we need to check that it's not going off the boundaries. So while left is greater than or equal to zero, and left is less than the right, less than or equal to right, um, and our right boundary is, wait, hold on a second. Uh, wait a minute. So what we can do is say, well, while left is greater than or equal to zero, and then our right is uh, less than or equal to our s dot length, right? It's in our boundaries. But what, instead, instead of checking like left doesn't cross right, what we're gonna check is that we're, we're checking. Okay, so I kind of got mixed up here, and I'm kind of thinking of like a like a kind of a sorting algorithm where we make sure left and right don't cross. But here, they're not even going in the same direction. They're going outward. So I completely forgot. Sorry about that. So remember that left is going this way and right is going this way. So we don't need to check if they're going to cross. They're not going to cross. So we'll say, well, left is greater than zero and our right is less than our string dot length. And we also need to check that this is still a palindrome. So as we're expanding out, we're, this is the equivalent of doing this true, true, false thing. Is it still a palindrome? Okay, we check these points. It's not a palindrome. So we're going to go so long as it is a palindrome. So how do we know it's a palindrome if the character at the left boundary is still equal to the character at the right boundary? So s dot char at left equals equals s dot char at um, the right boundary then we know this is still a palindrome. There's nothing to worry about. Let's keep expanding or let's keep uh, expanding in different in both different directions. So left minus minus, go to the next character on the left and right plus plus, check the next character on the right and that will do it for this. And then once we break out of this while loop, either we've exhausted the whole string or there were some two characters that broke that broke this. So we'll know either way, we'll know that between our left and our right, we have a valid palindrome substring. So that's all we need. So we need to return the length of that. 
So we'll say return um, right. Wait. So yeah, return right minus left, and then plus minus one. Okay. So the reason we do minus one is because before this while loop condition breaks, actually what happens is right plus plus is one boundary to the right, left minus minus one boundary to the left. So if we just said right minus left plus one, we would actually be ahead by two two um two letters or two characters. So we want to do return right minus left minus one to be so that we have the right actual length of our substring. So I, hopefully that makes sense because usually I know we're returning like right minus left plus one because we're like it's indexed, but this is not indexed. This they're literally going in separate directions. If we did plus one, we'd be two characters off. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. And then now that's it. That's literally it for this method. It will return the length of the substring. And then in this method, we'll compare We'll compare the different lengths and um, we will update our overall length based on what we get. So we're gonna, okay, what do we say here? For a certain substring, we're gonna iterate through our loop and expand from each point. So we're gonna apply our expand from point method on each of these. So we're gonna say for int i equals zero. And actually before I do that, I need to say int um, longest, Longest substring, I'll call it. I was going to call it longest palindrome, but that's the name of the method. So int longest palindrome equals zero. So we'll say, okay, also I messed one thing up. So we need a starting and an end because we're going to... Actually, I don't need this. I don't think I need this. Hold on. What am I doing? Okay, because we're returning the actual substring itself and not the length of it, we're gonna we're gonna need a starting boundary and an ending boundary that we will keep updating as we run this method through the different points and get the uh, keep uh, keep updating the length of the longest the longest palindrome. So sorry, I'm getting so confused, but I hope that makes sense. So int start equals zero, and then int end equals zero, and now we'll apply that method. So we'll say uh, for int i equals zero. Um, i is less than s dot length i plus plus and what I'll do is say um, okay so I forgot to talk about this in the beginning but there are two types of palindromes well not two types of palindromes but two cases to consider the first case is when you have an even when you have an even an even sized an even length palindrome. So like when we had, um, what was the word? Okay, like A, B, B, A. Here the size of this is even, it's four, right? So length equals four. So we know that in order for this to be a palindrome, this has a pair to check. So this checks this pair and this checks this pair. But what if it's not even? So if we have an odd length palindrome, say A, um, let me write it up here. Say A, B, A, in the case of an odd palindrome, this B here, it doesn't have another B pair to check against. Like in here, there was another B pair to check, but here, there's only one B in the middle. Although this is still a palindrome, it doesn't have a corresponding pair to check whether or not this is a palindrome. So we're going to have to account for that case. Um, yeah, we're going to have to account for that case when we say expand from point, okay? So here... We need to call this method, we need to call it two times. The first time being where we account for this this case here of an odd length palindrome. So we'll say, we'll call expand, um, expand from, wait, yeah, expand from point, um, pass in our string, and we're going to pass in i as the left boundary, and we're also going to pass in um, not the boundary, the left starting point, and we're going to pass an I again for the right starting point. So the point is, it checks, okay, B, is B equal to B? Yes, okay. So we, we don't risk, like, saying this is not a palindrome entirely. And then we call it again, expand from point, um, S, I, and then I plus 1. So now we're actually expanding out from the middle. And like in the case of A, B, B, A, this is I, this is I plus 1, and we expand that way. And then, yeah, so here, since it could be any one of these two cases, we don't know if it's odd or even length. We don't know what we're going to get passed in. Uh, we need to take the, the max length between these two. So I'm going to have 
uh, some variable called max length. Um, uh, mm, actually, no. Mm, hold on, let me think about this. So we need to get the max length between these two, because remember, this is returning a length. So I need to somehow... Okay, let me just say int max equals math dot max between wait I should store these I'm supposed to store these oh my gosh so I'm gonna say int uh how can I do this I need to think hold on if I say int uh I don't know first check equals this int okay I'll just say int first check equals this and then an int second check check equals equals this right and then I say it max equals math dot max of the first check and the second check okay so that's gonna be the max length the longest palindrome that we have seen thus far so now I can compare this max value to my the difference between my end and my start so basically the interval that we already have so I'll say if um, uh, what's it called? If end minus start um, plus one is greater than my max. If end minus start plus one is greater than my max. Wait, no. Hold on. I'm. I want to check if the max that if so if the the palindrome that we're on if its length is greater than what we already have. So we're gonna be checking if max is greater than the palindrome that we already have so end minus start and it's not plus one just end minus start sorry about that so if max is greater than n minus start then because we're going to add the plus one at the end so we don't want to be missing uh adding too many characters here um and because when we do this we're actually going to be updating it to the actual um the actual indexes just to not get mixed up and then at the end when we return then we'll do a plus one i hope that makes sense it's a bit confusing if max is greater than end minus start, then we say um, our start. So update our start and update our end. So that's going to be the new length. That's going to be the new the new indexes of our longest palindromic substring that we've seen so far. So start equals i, and then we'll minus our max length. So max, and then minus. So we'll say max minus 1, and then divided by 2. So this will position us in the correct spot from i. Okay, so start will equal i minus max minus 1 divided by 2, and then the end will just equal max divided by 2. So n equals max divided by 2. So this will position us in the correct spot of our um, of our right boundary. So now all we have to do is return. So once this for loop completes, we've ha we know that we've exhausted our whole string. We've checked all the possible palindromes or the length to the longest palindrome, and we'll just return that. So we'll say return s.substring of um wait that's not substring okay of start so we start at the start it's inclusive end is exclusive so actually that's why we add plus one here because the end will be exclusive in a substring so we want to include it okay so i kind of got mixed up here okay okay forget it but but this is this is right I think where I got mixed up was when I was talking about my boundaries in this part. So if you heard what I said, kind of ignore it because I forgot like how, oh my gosh, what just happened? How you were, um, okay, I don't know what just happened. Okay, my stuff is still here. Okay, so now I'm just going to submit this. So let's see what we get. Oh, sorry. Return zero. Okay, see, now I'm having these string out of bounds exceptions. This is, oh, I know what I did wrong. Um, where is it? So here, end is not max divided by two. It's i plus max divided by two. And that's why you add i. And now, 
Um, let's see, what are we doing now? Okay, <laughs> so it worked. Um, let me submit it and see. Okay, so yeah, that's it for this problem. I hope my, I know my explanation was a little like all over the place, but I hope this helped. Thanks for watching.